Rosemary Dunaway of Little Rock, Arkansas. America's Junior Miss for 1967. Hi, that's Rick. He's been teaching me some of the finer points of slot car racing. At least he was until he got carried away with the competitive spirit. Rick knows if he makes a mistake here, he'll only lose the race. But make the same mistake on the road in a real car? Uh, well, there's a lot more at stake. To be tops here or on the road, you have to drive with your mind in gear, know what you're doing, and be able to do it. It takes skill, technique, control, the qualities that go into becoming an all-round ace driver. Okay, gang, let's go. Come on, Rick. Here we go. Rick's an all-round ace driver, the kind you can trust if you're in the passenger seat. But what does being an ace driver, or an ace at anything, really mean? Being an ace had a special meaning for Rosemary when she was competing for the Junior Miss crowd. It meant she had to be alert at all times, ready to handle anything that came her way. She also had to be courteous, to do the things expected of her, and to make it easier and more pleasant for others. Education, too, is the most important phase of the junior misjudging. Rosemary's high school grades were one of the determining factors in her being acclaimed America's Junior Miss for 1967. Being an ace had a special meaning for Rosemary during the Junior Miss pageant. And when you stop to think about it, being an ace driver is a lot like being an ace at anything else. An ace driver, alert, courteous, educated. If every driver met these three qualifications, traffic accidents wouldn't be the problem they are today. Many of today's ace drivers have built sound driving habits on the skills and knowledge gained in high school driver education courses. An alert driver able to read the danger signs of the road and take the correct action to avoid trouble. For example, that parked car up ahead. Only the man in that car knows what he's going to do. But an alert driver has to be ready for anything he might do, like suddenly deciding to get out of the car. This is the checkpoint for an alert driver, the point where he has to identify the danger, consider the alternatives, and take action. In this case, by braking quickly and smoothly, checking traffic to the side and rear, and moving past the hazard. The alert driver also watches for danger signs off the street, like children playing close by. Another checkpoint. An alert driver knows when a ball rolls into the street, there could be a child running after it. The proper action? Brake quickly while sounding horn, then signal to warn other motorists. When it's safe to do so, motion the child to get the ball. The alert driver's ability to recognize warning signs is his best insurance for avoiding trouble. Checkpoint, a double parked truck hiding a car ready to pull out. Checkpoint, a hot tailpipe of a parked car ready to move into traffic. These are tricks of the trade for the alert driver. While the alert driver uses selective vision for spotting trouble, he's also aware of the dangers of target fascination. Anything that captures and holds the driver's attention limits his ability to recognize and react to danger. Checking the rearview mirror is a necessary driving habit, but a quick look is a safe look. The same holds true for the instrument panel. A long look at the speedometer can literally throw a cement wall in front of the car if the driver misses his reaction checkpoint. A tachometer can tell a lot about the way a car is performing. However, if you count every RPM, you could end up with an RIP. The truck up ahead seems to go into reverse when you take your eyes off it for a few seconds. The result? It's usually too late to do anything about it. A 
or radio can be just as deadly. Lean over to find a station and you tend to steer in the direction your head is turned, not the direction of the road. It's almost impossible to control a speeding car on grass or gravel. You'll just have to go along for the ride. The pinpoint vision of target fascination is a real enemy that every driver has to fight. The big picture is the safe driver's view. Central vision identifies what the eye sees. Fringe vision alerts the driver to possible danger. Use both and take a comprehensive look at the road. But don't let the big picture get out of control. Highway hypnosis is dangerous, just as dangerous as target fascination. The steady pace of monotonous, high-speed driving on a highway can lull the driver's eyes and mind off the road. The wide pavement and separation from oncoming traffic puts the whole picture out of focus. The feeling of speed is lost as the driver drifts toward disaster. However, in reality, speed increases. Judgment and alertness become dull. The road is meaningless until... It's lost. An alert driver combats highway hypnosis with selective seeing. Awareness of the distance from the car ahead and behind. Quick check of the instruments. A fast glance at a billboard and a coffee stop when drowsy. You can also beat highway hypnosis by observing and obeying traffic signs by your speedometer, not by the way you feel. You might make it at 45 miles per hour, but unexpected loose gravel on the road can quickly stack the odds against you and send your car into the guardrail out of control. The alert driver is not only on the lookout for the mistakes of others, he helps other drivers avoid trouble by showing courtesy on the road. He knows that one of the trade secrets of defensive driving is the one ahead technique. The common courtesy, like slowing to allow a car to merge with freeway traffic, helps the ace driver stay out of trouble. And the other driver is usually ready to return the favor, maybe by dropping back to let another car change lanes in heavy traffic. Being a nice guy on the road is infectious. But being a nice guy, a polite driver, is also a follow-up technique to defensive driving. Courtesy helps the other driver make the right move. A tight passing situation can put everyone in a tough spot, unless someone is courteous enough to give the other fellow a break. And if the other driver can't make up his mind, give him the whole road. It's plain common sense to keep a confused driver out of trouble that may involve you. Remember, courtesy is part of defensive driving, even if the other guy won't play the game. A tailgater can be a real agitator. Don't let him get to you. Give him the road and hope he wises up before he ends up in trouble. There's nothing square about being a courteous driver. It's just plain common sense and another step toward becoming a real ace. Finally, the true ace driver is the educated driver educated in the classroom and on the road. He knows what to do and how to do it with poise and precision. Even a relatively simple maneuver like turning requires know-how. Many drivers turn too soon, clipping a car in the other lane or bouncing off a curb. Other drivers turn with a full wind-up of the steering wheel, not prepared for the backlash that can send their car into the other lane of traffic. The right line for turning a corner carries the car smoothly between other cars and the curb with the least amount of steering effort. It takes practice, just like precision parking. Driving headfirst into a space isn't much of a problem, but today's driving situations demand how to do it knowledge of all parking techniques. Parallel parking. Pull even with the car in front of the empty space, leaving about 18 inches between the cars. Cut the steering wheel to the right and back slowly into the space until your car is on a 45 degree angle to the curb and your right front fender is lined up with the left rear fender of the parked car ahead of the space. Now cut the steering wheel left and back into the space, bringing the left side of your car in line with the other parked cars. 
Finally, line your car up with the curb, leaving equal space between the cars in front and behind. Parallel parking is tricky, but angle parking also takes a bit of know-how. The main thing here is get the car on the same angle with the other parked cars. Turn in on an angle, using the fender point of the car beyond the space as a guide. Stop. Don't try to curve into an angle parking space. It's too easy to leave a fender hanging over the line. Back up and ease into the space, centering your car between the lines. Once you've mastered straight ahead and angle parking, you shouldn't have much trouble in a parking lot until you find a lot where you have to back straight into a parking slot. Go just beyond the empty space while turning away from it. Leave sufficient room from the row in front to be able to swing your car in. Cut the wheel back sharply and move slowly into the space, checking the parked cars. Once you're in the space, Line your car up with the other parked cars. Go by the book. It's easy to become the ace driver. Alert, courteous, educated. The driver who can't get into trouble, right? Wrong. There's one more factor that every ace driver must consider. His car. It's up to every ace driver to be certain his car can meet the demands he places on it because his safety and the safety of others depends on the condition of his car. The shortest distance from one point to another is the safe driving line, the line an ace driver always follows. Now you've got the whole story. The alert driver, able to recognize trouble and avoid it. The courteous driver, helping himself by helping other drivers. The educated driver, with the skills and knowledge of the road and his car to stay on the safe side. Join the thousand of young drivers like Rick. Try some of the techniques you've seen today. Stay alert behind the wheel, be courteous to the other drivers, and learn all you can in the classroom and on the road. You'll be well on your way, headed in the right direction toward becoming a real ace driver. <laughs>